YouTube, it is me again, your favorite Texas trucker. I'm southbound on I-35 in Missouri, headed towards Kansas City. Always hate um, going through this area. Um, you know, I mean, it's a it's an easy drive. The scenery is not too bad. Uh, a little boring, but not too bad. Uh, problem is for me is that. Um, Every time I take this route towards Texas, and I take this route towards Texas, I'd say probably seven out of every ten times that I go home. Uh, I pass uh, by Independence, Missouri, and uh, it's always kind of rough on me passing, passing by Independence. You know, uh, that's where I was born at. It's where my dad's lived most of his life. Well, my dad lived most of his life. Uh, you know, my dad was a truck driver. And when I was young, he'd take me out on the truck, and he pretty much instilled in me the dream to become a truck driver. You know, and, and uh, you know, I'm a truck driver today because of him. I've had the dream my whole life. You know, I've been following it my whole life. That's why I, ultimately why I did it, but my dad and I didn't have a good relationship at all. You know? He uh, he was a truck driver in the in the 70s, you know, when when truck drivers were doing a lot of drugs, you know? and uh, you know he was on speed, you know, so that he could stay awake, you know, longer hours, drive more, you know, and he kind of sunk pretty deep into the into the old drug thing and, and uh, it led to my my uh, mom and his divorce when I was young and, and uh, once they got divorced you know he kind of washed his hands of me he didn't really want to have anything to do with me and so I grew up without a dad you know having this dream to be a truck driver just like my dad but not having a dad you know and, and uh, you know now he's dead came through here six months or so ago and you know I was like man I'm gonna I'm old you know I'm getting older I'm in my late 40s now so I'm gonna let bygones be bygones you know I'm gonna drop this grudge I've had for the last 20 something years and I'm gonna look him up and meet him somewhere to have some coffee and maybe talk and maybe get to where you know we could become friends you know and he is my dad after all, you know. So I searched for him and looked for him and found his mortuary, or found his obituary. Now, uh, coming through this area always reminds me of, you know, the fact that I held that grudge for so long and, and um, I refused to talk to him. They had a falling out when I was in my 20s, early 20s. You know, I searched for him when I was in the Army, and I found him again um, when I was stationed at Fort Leonard Wood. And I went over visiting his house, and, and um, you know, we had a good time. I went out on the truck with him and, and uh, you know, spent my you know, week's vacation with him. I was going out to work with him all the time. And, and uh, you know, by that time, I was driving trucks in the Army. And, got out of the army and then he and I kind of had a falling out and that was about oh I guess I was 21 22 years old and then I never talked to him again um, the whole thing about not being there when I was a kid never sending birthday cards you know never um, never coming to visit you know never trying to pick me up you know for vacations or, or summer holidays or never calling, never saying hello, and then uh, he and I had that falling out when I was in, the, in my young 20s, and I'm a stubborn son of a bitch, you know, I mean, I really am, and uh, I hold grudges for a long time, and, well, you know, I held that grudge, you know, all the way up until this year, you know, and about six months ago, this year, I decided I was going to bury the axe and look him up, and it was too late, you know. So every time I come through this area, it always, um, 
it always kind of tears me up a little bit, you know, I mean, he was my dad, and uh, he was a damn good truck driver, and uh, he instilled in me the, you know, the desire and the dream to be a truck driver, you know, and, uh, yeah, we, we didn't have a great past, and he wasn't really there for me when I was a kid, you know, but uh, he was my, he was my dad, you know, and, I got two brothers, you know, by my dad, you know, and, and uh, you know, there's family on that side of the tree that I'll probably never be close to because I held that grudge all that time, you know, and, and I'd like to be close to them, you know, I'd like to, to meet them and see them, you know, talk to them about, you know, their lives. Anyway, I lost it, you know, so I'll be passing through, um, passing by Independence, Missouri again, and, you know, now I'm dealing with those thoughts again, and pretty much every month I deal with them, you know, and, and uh, I guess in a way it's a type of self-condemnation, you know, because I held that grudge for so long, you know, and, uh, and I never made an attempt, and, uh, you know, I can say he never made an attempt either, you know, but fuck, that was the way he was, you know, he, washed his hands of me, you know, and it was, you know, anyway, he was my dad, you know, good or bad, you know, regardless of what the world might think of a man, he was my dad, and, um, you know, he never did anything to harm me in any way, um, you know, not that I can remember, you know, my mom said a few things that he did when I was a baby, but they're true, they're pretty bad, you know, but, ultimately the reason I hate drugs so much. He's the reason that I hate drugs because, you know, those, those drugs are what tore my family apart. And, uh, you know, left me without a dad. You know, left me with two brothers that I'll never know. One of them is, is gone now, too. He died in a car wreck. The other one is, you know, he's living his life. I ain't never been part of it, you know, so I can't blame him for not really being part of mine. But anyway, I'm headed. Um, I'm headed south on uh, 35. I'll, I'll um, follow that all the way into Kansas City, and then I'll get on the military trail uh, after Kansas City in, in Kansas. Um, I'll get on the military trail and follow it south, and then uh, from there I'll cut over on a couple different state highways, U.S. highways, in order to avoid the toll roads in, in Oklahoma. Pick it up, you know, back at Big Cabin, uh, come into Texas around Denison. Uh, hopefully, I won't have to have um, any delays because I don't have very much time to be jacking with you know, where this is all concerned. So, uh, hopefully, I'll be sleeping in my bed tonight. You know, that's the plan anyway. So, anyway, I just kind of wanted to give y'all an update. Um, I'll be stopping up here to a pilot here you know, pretty soon. I'm down to my down to two uh, monsters left out of the case that I came out here with. I'm completely out of bottled water. I actually stuck a gallon of, of uh, drinking water in there that I used for cooking. I had an extra gallon, so I stuck it down in there. And uh, I've been drinking on that for the last day or so. Uh, I ate last of my fruit this morning, uh, so I'm going to be stopping this pilot. I'm going to probably spend about twenty dollars getting a few drinks to last me the rest of the day today and I drink a lot of water so instead of buying um, you know a bunch of bottled waters that cost a dollar or something a piece I'm just gonna buy another gallon of water and stick it in there. I'll just drink out of it when I need it. Nobody else is drinking out of it. You know. But um, that's the uh, that's the update for now. Yeah, there's one other thing that I wanted to add to this, and, uh, and that has to do with, um, with mountain climbing and, and, and descending in mountains. I've had a, a couple of people ask me to do a video on that. They're a little concerned about it because they're, uh, you know, fixing to go to school and, and learn whatever they need to learn to become truck drivers, most of them that I'm talking to are coming with Millis, but a couple of them may not, um, but they're all really kind of concerned about it, and uh, I had a friend of mine post uh, just this morning that you know, he was running through the Appalachian Mountains, and that um, he saw a couple
truck smoking all the way down. And, you know, I responded to the post and I told him, I said, you know, if, if uh, those guys are smoking going down those hills, they're freaking idiots. And mountains are not difficult to, to deal with. I mean, we've got some pretty rough ones and, and you know, the rougher they are, the, the um, you know, the worse it is. As a general rule, they'll tell you that if, if, you know, to go down a mountain using the same gear that you use to go up the mountain. So if you downshift going up a mountain, running, you know, down into eighth or, or seventh gear, then they're saying you should use eighth or seventh gear going down. That's not always the case. I mean, that's a general rule, and, and, and it's definitely one to, to pay attention to. Um, but that's not always the case, mainly because uh, you're talking about, you know, the, the uh, geological patterns of uh, the topography of the earth, and it's not always asymmetrical, meaning that uh, the south side of a mountain may not be the same incline or decline as the north side of the mountain. And if you go down a mountain too slow, you become a, a uh, traffic hazard. So you've really got to kind of assess the mountain as you get up to the top of it, and as you drive, you're going to learn. Um, you're going to learn a little bit about about doing this. I'm going to do a, a mountain video when I get back over into Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, some of those, some of those areas where they've got some good ones. Um, I don't run the western states, so I can't do the you know videos in Colorado and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> But essentially, um, if it's a, a, a 4%, 5%, even a 6% um, decline uh, on the grade, you can run that in ninth gear. Right? You uh, just shift it to ninth gear when you go down, um, set your jake brake on its highest setting, and then you just take your foot off the gas. The jake brake and the, and the uh, being in ninth gear will keep your speed down. Um, if you do note that your speed is starting to pick up a little bit, you just apply gentle pressure on the brake. You don't pound the brake. You just apply some gentle pressure on the brake. Most of these trucks today have got a um, anti-brake system. And the anti-brake system, the way it works, uh, as you go through school, you should learn a technique called stab braking. Essentially, that's uh, you know uh, putting uh, pressure on the brake, letting up, putting pressure on the brake, letting up, putting pressure on the brake, letting up, and so on, uh, all the way down the hill. Well, the anti-brake system does that for you, and it does it a lot faster, and it does it a lot more efficiently than what you can do it. So, so if you see that your speed is starting to pick up a little bit, all right, if you're in ninth gear. Uh, you know, you can go down the hill 50, 55 miles an hour. If you start seeing that you're running over that 50, 55 miles an hour, then uh, then apply gentle pressure to the brakes, hold it until your speed starts to drop, and then let off of it. the jake brake and, uh, and the uh, you know the lower gear will take care of the rest. And then you you know you just watch your speed, and you see it start creeping up again, just to put you know gentle pressure on it. Until it starts slowing back down again and let off of it. You don't sit on your brakes. If you sit on your brakes, you're going to smoke them out. You're going to end up catching yourself on fire. Um, you know, you don't uh, don't let your engine and let your your jet brake, your engine brake, do the work for you, um, or let your transmission and your engine brake do the work for you. Don't don't uh, sit there and try to go down a hill. You know, one of these steep declines in you know, tenth gear. 75, 80 miles an hour down the hills. You'll find out as you're driving, you'll find out what hills that you can run in 10th gear. You'll find out what hills you need to run in 9th gear. And then there's some places, especially in Virginia and West Virginia, that some of the hills are so steep, going down into, into towns and cities, they've got stoplights at the bottom of the, uh, some of these hills. And so they'll set a truck speed limit at like 35 or 40, 45 miles an hour. And then they've got a truck line. Um, take my advice, 
when you hit those and run them at that speed because stopping at a stoplight when you're coming down a steep decline into a city is not a fun thing to do if you're not getting in control of your speed. Uh, so, you know, you run it in a lower gear. If they're asking for 30, 35 miles an hour, then you run it in about eighth gear. It's gonna really seem like you're going down the hill really slow, you know, but it's better to be, uh, you know, safe than sorry. And then, you know, run it the same way. You know, if you see you start climbing up over 35 miles an hour, then uh, general pressure on the brake till it starts to slow down, let off the brake. Uh, you know, you may hit the brake every 45 seconds or so, hold it for, uh, hold it for five, 10 seconds and then let it off. You know, uh, that's pretty much all you need to do. And you're going to get, you know, you should get experience if, unless you're with one of these companies that only sends you out with a, a, a trainer for a week. You know, then you're not going to have experience doing anything. You know, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Uh, you just cannot learn this job in a week. But if you're with a company that puts you out with a trainer for a little while, you know, 15,000, 10,000 miles, 25,000 miles, you know, which I think is a little bit excessive. But if you're with a trainer that puts you, you know, you go out with a trainer for an extended period of time, and eventually you're going to run those kind of mountains, and you're going to get that experience. Uh, it's not that bad. I mean, you worry about it, but it's really not that bad. As long as you choose the proper gear, and as long as, um, as you don't overwork your brakes, you know, you're going to be just fine. Uh, so I'll do a video on them later, but I wanted to touch on it now because there's quite a few people that are that are um, you know discussing it. So we'll leave it at that, and we'll catch you next time. Peace out.